let's do some problems out of chapter 3. We'll start, as we usually do, right at the very beginning. So let's begin with exercise 3.1. And this will get us through learning objective number 1. And let's read the question, see what we have. Fixed and variable cost behavior. <clears throat> That's the heart of the chapter, isn't it? Goes down smooth, operates a number of smoothie bars in a busy suburban mall. The fixed weekly expense of a smoothie bar is $2,500. Let's make a note of that right now. I like to write down stuff as we get to it so that it is top of my mind so I don't forget it because the question itself has information. So when you get to what is required, sometimes you forget to read the opening paragraph and you're missing a piece of data. And there it is, right? <clears throat> and the variable cost per smoothie served is 75 cents. So our variable cost is 75 cents per unit. If we were going to write this of the form <clears throat> y equals a plus b, we would write y equals 2500 plus 0.75 x. There's our form of, oh, sorry, of, of y equals ax plus b. Let's continue on here. <clears throat> Required, fill in the following table with your estimates of total costs and costs per smoothie at the indicated levels of activity for a smoothie bar. Round off to the nearest tenth of a cent. And when we flip the page over, we see at the top of the page what we have to do. So I will uh, replicate it for you here at the cross the top we have different levels of volume. 2,100 smoothies in a week, 2,800 smoothies in a week, and 3,500 smoothies in a week. And we are asked to look at what our, across this volume, what our fixed cost would be, our variable cost, our total cost, and our cost per smoothie and we just have to fill in this table and there's just a bunch of question marks so we got to fill it in so let's begin let's start across the top row fixed cost is 2500 a week remember fixed costs are fixed regardless of the level of activity it looks like this right remember fixed cost is fixed so we just put in 2500 right across the top our variable cost, we're told, is 75 cents a unit. And remember, a variable cost, this is a true variable cost because it doesn't say 75 cents for every 10. It says every 75 cents for every unit. So it looks like that. So we just take 75 cents and we multiply it by each of these three numbers. If we multiply it here, we'll get 1875, 2100, and 2625. Total cost. That's just addition. You can do that, right? 4375, 4600, 5125. Then it's cost per smoothie. So this is our total cost. And here's our smoothie volume. So we just do some division. Here we'll get $2.08.3. It says round to the nearest tenth of a cent. So that's what I'm doing. This is 1.643. And this is 1.464. So you see that as our volume increases, our average cost per smoothie drops. So if we want to eliminate, let's say that we're in a mall, one mall, and we think the mall is capable of doing 3,500 smoothies in a week. That's about the demand that the mall will support. We can price our smoothies at 225 and even if volume drops to 2100, we'll still make money. But here's the problem. Somebody else can set up a second smoothie bar in the mall, and now we have to split the demand. And if we have to split the demand, well, at 2100, I can't even cover my... Uh, I'll drop from 2100 to 1750, half of the 3500. I may not even cover this cost. But what I can do... Now watch this. This is great competitive theory is I can price my smoothie at $1.99. At $1.99, if I'm doing this volume, I'm making money. Now, listen to me here. If somebody else is investigating setting up a smoothie bar in my mall, of which I now have a monopoly, 
They'll look at the volume of 3,500. They'll say, well, the mall can handle 3,500. If I set one up, we'll get 1,750 each. And then they'll figure out their cost and they'll go, but I can't even cover my cost. They're selling them for a buck 99. It would cost me 208 just to supply a smoothie. I can't even compete with that price. And you get rid of competitors. So by getting the volume and driving your average cost down, you can price your product so that anybody entering the market would say, there's no way that I can cover that cost. Do you see the power that management accounting has? It's not just a matter of figuring out how much it costs you. But from that, you can develop strategy to ensure that you keep and own the market that you're in by pricing your product in such a way that no entrant could possibly compete against you. It's beautiful. Well, we're not done here. There's a second part to this question, number two. And it says, does the cost per smoothie increase, decrease, or remain the same as the number of smoothies served in a week increases? Well, we can answer it this way. Our cost per smoothie drops as volume increases. And the reason why is because our fixed costs are spread out over more units. That's the power of size. Economies of scale. Now, here's the thing. We're going from 2100 smoothies to 3500 smoothies. There's nothing saying that our variable costs can't drop from 75 cents to maybe 72 cents or even 70 cents. There's power in size. We're going to begin 3.2, and you're probably wondering, well, where's the black screen? Well, you'll notice that 3.2 is an Excel question. So let's have a look. Scattergram analysis. The data below have been taken from the cost records of the Halifax General Hospital. The data relate to the cost of admitting patients at various levels of patient activity. And we're given uh, months from May all the way to December, the number of patients admitted in this row and the costs down in this row. Required, number one, use Microsoft Excel to prepare a scattergram using the above data. Plot admitting department costs on the vertical axis and number of patients, uh, sorry, uh, and uh, number of patients admitted on the horizontal. Well, the horizontal, you'll remember, is our x-axis. The vertical axis is our y. Our x-axis is our activity base. Number of patients admitted is our activity base. So we're doing okay. We've got it. So we have to sp uh, do a scattergram. Look how easy this is. I put my mouse in this cell and I click and hold. I'll drag it over here and drag it down till I highlight my entire data set. Look up here where it says scatter, click. I have a number of options to choose from. Just take the marked scatter, click on that, and there we go. Nice and simple, right? Now you're looking at this and you're probably saying, but hang on, this doesn't make any sense because look, if this drops down, it doesn't intercept the vertical axis. It'll, it'll cut right through the x-axis, and if I extend it down, it'll intercept the vertical axis at a negative number. So are you saying that my fixed costs are negative? Well, no. Excel is powerful, but it has limitations. Look at here, 3,100, 30,000, 29, 28, 27. See, it ends at 25,000, whereas the origin of the X value is at zero. We would have to extend it all the way down to see what this actually looks like. But luckily, what we can do is see these chart quick layouts. Here's the one we want with the line. So just click down here and find this one, click in this one, and look what happens. Now it's scaled. So there's zero, zero at the intercept. So look at how this works. Now this is going across. Now if you keep extending it across, notice that it'll intercept somewhere around the 20,000 mark. See that? So there is power. So that's the first part of the question done. Number two, does it appear that the admitting department costs are related to the number of patients admitted? If they're related, we should see some sort of vertical line, and we do. They seem as 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 activity is increasing. Look what look at where my mouse is on the vertical on the horizontal axis here. As the number of patients increase, the the costs also increase because we have an increasing linear line. 
So the answer to number two is, yes, it does appear that way. Now, it doesn't, the question doesn't say, is it? It asks you, does it appear that way? And yes, it appears that way. Now, if we do some more advanced, really advanced statistical techniques, we might find that the relationship might not be as strong as we think it is. But that's not what the question is asking. It's asking, does it appear to be that way? At first glance, yes, it absolutely appears to be that way. There's a little bit of Excel and some scatter plots and a little bit of uh, 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 analysis beyond just what's given you. We've taken it the extra step. We've said it doesn't look right when, when it's just going down into the uh, uh, horizontal axis and we were able to look beyond the data and realize that it wasn't good enough. Let's take one more step and go. So this is important. Whenever you're asked to do something and the answer doesn't quite look right, take a step back and ask yourself, well now, why doesn't it quite look right? And you might see that, well, I need to go one more step. I'm on the right track. Just one more step takes me there. That's thinking beyond what's given to you. That is what employers pay for.